Hey guys, what's up? It's Katie Bing and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. On this channel, you will find a lot of things about me, which is pretty much business, dogs, um, cats, animals, and a lot of girls being silly and trying to figure out life. So if that's some stuff that you're into, make sure to press the subscribe button. I also really like football. I feel like that's a pointer I should like point out. But anyways, today's video is a dog training video and I'm so excited to talk about it. We're talking about the prong collar. And this looks like a medieval torture device and it's a very controversial tool in the dog training world. So I thought it would be amazing to sit down and talk to you about a tool that is controversial and kind of start a conversation about it, show you how I used it and how it's helped me in my training process because I have studied dog psychology and I think it's a very useful tool when used properly but a very cruel to tool when you don't use it and take into consideration what it's capable of. So I want to talk about some of the safety features of it, the bite effect it has, kind of the whole method to the madness of this crazy looking thing, a lot of the mistakes people make with it and how to use it properly and when it would be right to use it. So let's get right on into the video. So I am aware that this is a very controversial tool, but the way that we use it when we use it properly actually has the dog in control of when the corrections happen versus just yanking and hurting a dog because that is 100% abusive and cruel and I do not condone that. So I want to actually educate you so that you can make the decision of whether or whether or not this is a tool you support and would be interested in using. I've had so much success with it and I'm going to give you a little bit of insight onto it. The first thing I want to say is there's a lot of safety features about it, but the safety features are canceled out and don't work if you're not sizing it correctly. So the first thing I want to do is just tell you how to properly size it. You can see I have this little prong collar here. It literally fits around my little wrist. Um, but this is the prong collar I use for my Doberman, who's a pretty big dog. She's a pretty big girl. I love her. She's big. She's bad. We love Jazzy. But these lengths are super small. A lot of times you'll see dogs with a prong collar on and they have huge lengths and they're on the bottom of their neck. But right there, there's already no way you're using the prong collar correctly. Because my rule of thumb is at the top of the neck, the prong collar gives direction. Same with a slip lead or any type of leash. You're giving direction, you're in control of where their head's going. The middle of the neck, you're just on their larynx and their trachea and choking them. And the bottom of their neck, they're moving all around and you have no control of what direction they're going. So you're actually activating their oppositional reflex and working against yourself because they're just most likely going to pull and that's the strongest part of their neck. So first thing you want to do is get a prong collar that fits. One really easy way to tell if it fits is if you don't have to open it like this to slide it over your dog's neck and fasten it to, at the top of the neck, you definitely have too big of a prong collar. Um, so rule of thumb, get a small prong collar. The great thing about these is if you get the small linked ones, yes, they're a size small and come with really little links, but it's super easy. Here, I'll show you to take links on and off. I like how when you like do something on camera, it's always a little bit more difficult. Several days later, as you can see here, here's like just a little link. You can add them on and off of the collar. It's pretty straightforward. You just squeeze it together, pull it apart and you're set to go. So you can adjust. So if you get a small size and you have a, for example, Pitbull, I'm thinking that because that's um, my boyfriend's dog. So I was like, I trained him with one. Um, he has a huge head and a huge neck and that's why I thought of him. I was like, he needs small lengths, but I have to literally add like 10 on. So you can buy the links separately and have the smaller links so it stays at the top of their neck. A safety feature or one thing I want to point out about the prong collar is if you have a dog that pulls a lot or is insecure, the prong collar can actually give them security because it tells them and when you do it properly and train them properly, it allows them to decide when they're going to have their correction. So they start really thriving off of the structure. So when you pull on the prong collar, if you have a dog that's pulling a lot, you use a lot less force for the same result as you would with a normal slip lead or a flatbed collar. As far as the bite effect goes, what that means is you can feel it and it has a little bit of an ouch bite effect. 
A lot of people like to say that this is the same effect an old dog would have if they corrected a small dog, and that can be the psychology of it. But really what it is, is making the undesired behavior uncomfortable. So what I like to say is you put the pressure on when you don't want them to do something and make it uncomfortable for them and release it as soon as they're doing the desired behavior. Because this, in my opinion, is more valuable than just giving them treats because there's always going to be a distraction that's more intense than their desire to look at you and get a treat. But if you're making it uncomfortable to do the wrong thing, they're just going to learn to get ahead of the behavior and never put themselves in a position where you have to put pressure on them. So they'll always do the desired behavior. Another thing I wanna point out is because there is less force, you actually are not gonna hurt their trachea or their larynx as much as if you were using a slip lead or a flatbed collar where you're constantly pulling them. So it is designed to pinch more the muscle of their neck versus the front where it's gonna choke them and hurt them. I'm gonna show you how to use it on Jazzy and I'm not gonna go super in depth, I'm just gonna give you a little beginner's manual on how to dip your toes in the water when it comes to the prong collar. The first thing I'm going to do and what you should do for 10 to 15 minutes a day for I would say five to seven days when your dog's learning about the prong collar is throw the prong collar on and start conditioning it as a positive thing. So how you're going to do this is you're gonna take your dog outside with the prong collar already set up and you're going to put a slight, slight, slight amount of pressure on the prong collar and then as soon as the dog starts to go in the direction of the pressure, you're gonna release the pressure and pet that puppy, make them realize that that's what you want them to do, and they're gonna start responding to the pressure on the prong collar, and this is going to start teaching them how you want them to react to the pressure on the prong collar. So the slower you are with this, the more they're going to understand what's expected of them. Now, the next part in this first step of the prong collar is teaching the dog how to correct themselves. So uh, eventually what you want the dog to do is look at you and pay attention to you and never have any pressure on the leash when it comes to the prong collar. So how we're gonna achieve that is what I like to call the setting your hand method. By that, I mean you're gonna start and stop and set your hand. So what you're gonna do is you're going to hold the dog's leash and you're gonna set your hand right by your hip and not move it one bit. All you're going to do is walk with your dog, look straight ahead, and you are going to stop after a couple steps, and your dog is naturally going to keep going forward, most likely, and pull on themselves. So what they're gonna do here when you're staying at a stopped position is they're going to go backwards to take the pressure off from the prong collar. You're going to repeat this for another 10 to 15 minutes. I think that's a perfect amount of time to give the dog a positive association and not burn them out. And then eventually you're going to notice in this video, Jazzy starts to check in with me more and pay more attention and stop putting pressure on the leash from the prong collar. So what you achieve is the dog getting ahead of the behavior when it comes to you stopping and paying attention to you more. And by the end of the video, Jazzy's pretty much just looking at me. You can walk in different directions, really change up where you're going so the dog starts to learn to always check in and look to you for directions. Okay, I hope this beginner's guide was pretty self-explanatory for you and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it makes a ton of sense to you. I'm so excited for this dog training series and this is the first video. Comment down below what you'd like to see. Um, I love the prong collar and if I want you to see how happy Jazzy is. She's a very insecure dog, so she has so much security knowing how to prevent corrections. And you can see how calm and cooperative she is in this video. And she is not upset about having a prong collar on. She's having a good time. She loves her training sessions. So comment down below your thoughts on it. I know that some people are against it. And Honestly, I'm so for people having different opinions. Let me know what you think. Let me know dog training videos you'd like to see. I love you guys so much, and I will see you next video. See ya. Bye. Ah!